Hello, everybody. Are we going? Yeah, yes. we're going. Uh, are you making some more adjustments? I think it's fine. Okay, it's perfect. Fine. Fine, 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 fine. It's 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 fine. <laughs> All right, Rome, since you started us off here, are you going to introduce us? Well, uh, I don't know. I may as well, I guess. <clears throat> over over right here, we have Seki. Remember what we discussed, Nick Knack. I have a new title in these videos. Okay, hang on. Oh, no, I know this. <laughs> Do you want me to pull that? Yes, up? yes. I have. We have the great Lord Vorn. Hi. Yes. And Nick Knack, who is. I'm doing a thing. Yeah, he's doing a thing. <laughs> he's making good on a promise. All right. Well, well, well. Nick Knack's going on that. I guess we can. can uh, Seki, continue to enlighten everyone on the channel about. Okay, the yeah. Wait, I am Seki. Vanguard of the Umbral store? Star, White Titan of Tassil Najir, Giant God of Destruction, the White Death. That's who I am. <laughs> That's a reference you're not gonna get. Actually, I don't know. No, that video might be up by the time this goes up. Oh, it definitely will be. Yep. Neat. Y'all will get that reference. Cool. Uh, we did Attila the Hun. Ah, as our okay. most recent Seki reacts, and that's Attila the Hun's title. Uh, and I was like, holy shit, that's metal as fuck. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a title. White Titan yeah. of Tassili Najar, Great God of Destruction, you just Vanguard. You like, an archaeological site in the title. Yes. <laughs> 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 but, um, so, so this week's show was Rando's pick, Out of the Hat. Yep. Um, but technically, this is number seven for Nick Knack this season. Technically, but Rando was all our collective choices, so. Yeah. I mean, this is a show that's been on my bucket list, so yeah. that seems like a good yeah. Rando candidate. I'm just yeah. making you laugh out of the fact that of, of the two times Rando's been pulled, both have been Nick Knack's shows. <laughs> <laughs> three times, three times, three times. I will hurt you if that happens. So we watched Bakemonogatari, yeah. one through 15, which is the yeah. entire first season. Um, if you watch it on Verve, it only has 12 episodes because three of them were... They were Blu-ray exclusive. Yeah, they were like while. web episodes that ended up direct to DVD. Mm. Yeah, the only way to watch them right now outside of owning the Blu-ray is Funimation at the moment, I believe. I Which is being Crunchy rolled into Crunchyroll. It. So hopefully that all that yeah. becomes a little bit less confusing. Unfortunately, it has not yet updated with Verve, which is holding the old Crunchyroll set of episodes. Or well, Verve old... reflects Crunchyroll's app set right now, and they yeah. haven't fully merged yet. Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, hey, um, Crunchyroll, uh, got people who work on the Crunchyroll website, are you okay? Are you doing okay? I've seen some interesting title choices on collections recently. <laughs> There, it's it's been a thing going around that like like the, they'll they'll put like staff picks and stuff like that, but it'll be like all of the titles of these light novels were way too long, so I decided to make a title of this playlist so that you don't have to worry about the titles of these really long ass light novels. <laughs> <laughs> like <Country> rules <laughs> got some bonkers categories. I almost feel like it's a parody of Netflix at this point. Yeah, like are y'all doing okay? Clearly not. Blink twice if you need help. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we want to get started in thought in our quick thoughts on the show. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's do ratings first because I don't. Let's start with you because this is your show. Look, I'm. This might be the single show I'm the most conflicted on out of anything we've watched. On one hand, there are elements I think are like art, like art in the man. I just studied at art school for most of my life and I am now going to craft something that has really deep meaning. On the other hand, it was pretty rare that I actually could understand that deep meaning and the storyline was paced so badly and a few things were actually yikes. So, I gotta give it a meh. I was not a huge fan of Bakemonogatari. Which sucks, because this is my show, and it's going to count against my rating at the end of the season. Realm? Uh, I'm honestly not too sure how I felt on this one, honestly, either. I wouldn't say that I'm... I'm, I'm not really sure where I'm at this one. I, I'd honestly say probably... I'd say probably a meh for me as well. But it's like... Kind of a... It's kind of like a soft meh. Because, like, I want to approve it. But, like there are some things that are a little off about it for me. 
Like, I didn't dislike it, per se, but I don't think it particularly stood out to me. Reminded me a little bit of uh, Bunny Girl Senpai in some yeah. aspects. God damn it! I was hoping no one would mention that, because I, I was gonna say, like, a hot take here, controversial opinion. This is just Bunny Girl Senpai, but for the Monogatari series. I mean, it's the it's, precursor. It's the same fucking show. Yeah. Well, Bunny Girl Senpai is the same show as this one. This yeah. Predates it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the yeah. same fucking show. Vorn? Uh, mark this world as another world I never want to end up in. <laughs> yeah, this There's is There's a lot scary. of those in the anime. Yeah. Also, too many goddamn puns. Way but, too uh, many goddamn puns. But yeah, this is a big-ass meh. It's so, so hard to understand. It's interesting, because it's the same complaints that you had for Bunny Girl Senpai. Ironically, so, Bunny Girl Senpai for me was a retroactive approval. I moved myself up to an approval because I felt that upon discussion, like, having the element of discussion with that show made it significantly better. This actually, without the discussion, skates by into just barely an approved for me, based on the fact that they incorporated a lot of Japanese folklore, which I really appreciated, and I've done a lot of studying about Japanese folklore, so I could, like, I could see the, the, the jokes, and I actually got most of the puns and stuff, because I know a lot of the myths I... that were mentioned, like, specifically by name. And so for me... Because uh, that was my biggest problem with Bunny Girl Senpai was that, like, Bunny Girl Senpai felt like an attack, and then it was very esoteric. This, for me, is a little bit more concrete, because I have a stronger association with the representations they're choosing for what's happening to the characters. So for me, this barely edges into an approved before conversation. Um, but I think I'm going to hold back on a final judgment until after story characters... Because I feel like the discussion of this could shift me either way. But for now, I'm sitting at an approved, like I had with Bunny Girl Senpai, after the discussion. Um, and honestly, I just... You have... The two of you have personally attacked me twice in the last six weeks, and I do not appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, we had Bunny Girl Senpai, which was immense emotionally damaging it was emotional damage right and then fucking rando just pulls this out of your goddamn ass right uh, uh, out of my ass out of my bucket list your ass um and like i just feel like the entire world is conspiring against me to tell me to go get fucking therapy Go get fucking therapy. Yeah, go. go. I hate this. Now. I hate this personal attack. All right. Well, while Seki's going to go get therapy, we'll be back at it again with story <laughs> characters. Well, no, 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 Now you have to jump in the gun a bit. Yeah. No, but you have. We haven't covered animation or or sound. Oh, this is this is pre. This is this yeah. is spoiler free thoughts. Yes. Yeah. Which includes okay. animation and music. Okay, then I guess I am ahead of myself. Speaking of music, there are five goddamn openings to this show. The only good part about the openings is that each one matches with an arc. Like, yeah. they, they do switch it for it's every an arc. interesting approach. I think it has a bit of a detrimental value, though, is it didn't give any time for any OPs to grow on me. Well, uh, so I liked two of them out of the five. I think I liked... It was either the first or the second, and then I think it's the fifth that's the one that's on all the... Four things. For the, it's renal circulation, right? That's Rain, the Rain one. Renai that... circulation. Uh, Rain if you're I. talking about the snake yeah. one, that's three. Yeah, D but that's the it's the one that's on all the um, the opening lists. That would be four. Yeah, so it's four. Sugar sweet nightmare. Three is the monkey. Okay, so sugar sweet nightmare. I really like that's the one on all the opening uh, challenges, and I actually knew it already because I've heard it a bunch of times, and so it had already kind of grown on me. And then I think it was opening number one I actually kind of enjoyed. Mm. Um, it might have been two. There's five of them. It's hard to keep track because I didn't. I only watched them each. Like I actually did go and look them up on YouTube and watch them all all the way through again, mm. and I still can't remember the names. Mine, mine here is gonna be Ray Nice Circulation because I've just seen that one meme to hell at this point before I even watch this. So oh, Ray Nice is four. Yeah, oh, Ray Nice. Yeah, four? Ray Nice is four. So Wait. I was right. It's Ray Nice. Yeah, because so, Staple Staple, Kaede oh, Michi, yeah. Ambivalent World, Rain Eye Circulation, and then Sugar Sweet Nightmare. Um, and then we have a return to Staple Staple in episode 12 for some reason. It's because oh, yeah. that, that one yeah. really takes a break from that particular arc and yeah. goes back to the main girl. Yeah. Um, 
if I had to pick an OP, I definitely think four is my favorite song. I think as far as like the OP tying into the story, I actually think five is at least the most interesting as far as that thematically, but four is the one that has the best song, and that might just be because it actually had time to grow on me. Yeah, we've been hearing it for a very, very long time. By the way, five has a live action OP. <laughs> Wait, what? So there, there's actually live action elements in most of the episodes yeah. throughout yeah. the show. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what it reminded me of for a second? Ore. <laughs> <laughs> where it just like randomly cuts Magical live Girl action. Ore, where it just cuts to like physical. But, yeah. it, but it does that here too. And there's a few times where I genuinely couldn't tell if it was a live action scene or, or an animated scene because. And I, th I think in a few of those instances, it was actually animated scenes, but they were just drawn with such photo realism that yeah. they looked like photos. I gotta say, I liked, I actually loved the anime. At first, I didn't like it. I grew to really love that animation style, though, just because of how fucking bonkers it is. It all, like, even during the most boring scenes, I was always like, okay, the fuck are they doing this time? I kind of I kind of pulled a little bit of a deep dive for mm. for once and I got real curious about the animation cuz it just seemed so off the rails compared to anything else that I've that I've mm -hmm. seen basically. Mm -hmm. Um and I ended up like wikiing and wikipediaing and googling um until I finally kind of got to the point where I read all the shit about how like so so this is the studio's signature. This, this is Shaft. this is some this is something mm. that Shaft designed specifically yeah. for the Monogatari series out of both necessity and desire. So they didn't have a lot of funding for for this first project, and so they they use like still screens and a lack of background characters and like photo and actual photos to like cut some costs while still allowing for a distinct art style that they thought fit the anime. And I actually like not having all the background characters. Yeah, all the that time. was something yeah. that I did notice. Like, a, like there was a noticeable lack of any kind of background characters. Yeah, they did that for money because they because yeah. it was cheaper. But it's um, also become such a unique signature styling of them. Like, if you look at some of their later anime, like Madoka Magica, mm -hmm. you can see some of that same blood there. But this is like this feels like the staff at its like this is Shaft at its most unhinged. Event. Yeah, because because it's kind of the beginning. This is like we don't have the money, but we want to make this good. So we're gonna try all of these experimental things and hope that they all come together. And I did also notice so the Wikia actually keeps records episode by episode, where they'll actually show you screens that were changed to the Blu-ray. And some of the episodes have significant changes between what was originally broadcasted and what was um, presented on Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. Um, because when they were redoing it for Blu-ray, they they literally uh, went back and fixed a bunch of their errors Another... because they had a bunch of scenes that like didn't follow um, didn't follow scene order and canon in the way that the characters were dressed and their colors and their hair, and they went back and fixed all that for Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. That's another point to watch, you know, on Funimation as opposed to Crunchyroll, because that Crunchyroll shows the original broadcast version right now. Funimation shows yeah. the Blu-ray version. Yeah. yeah. So, so you can definitely see the differences, and, like, obviously they, like, the Blu-ray version had a lot more time invested into mm -hmm. it, because there were straight-up scenes where, like, certain characters, their hair was, like, an entirely different color and style and length between one scene and the next, and then they fixed that for the, for the Blu-ray release. But live-action's not the only fucked-up style they do here. They also do stuff like... Randomly, it'll go into, like, this very Americanized-looking animation for its characters. Yeah, they also, um, they also set mood tones by, um, pantoning the screens. So, like, if they want to set a particular mood or evoke a certain, like, character, they'll, uh, it's, it's not grayscaling quite, but they'll, uh, color scale the entire mm -hmm. screen yeah. mm -hmm. and tableau. So it'll be all in shades of tan and beige, or all in purples and associated colors, or all in blues. Or yeah. all in green. Yeah. Sure, that? And how about those scenes that are just, like, randomly just the image that says what happens, or, like, some random thought. It reminded me of... Uh, yeah, so so that was specific. When I, when I was looking it up, that, they said specifically, was a result of lacking the budget to do transitional scenes, mm -hmm. but still wanting to do something that looked okay yeah. on a screen. It was interesting. It reminded me of, um, do you, have you ever seen a soundless movie? Or like a move, like the old movies where they didn't have sound. So, so they would yeah. just play kind of music over it and then they would. They like, would like cut to what the characters were saying on a text file and then cut back to the characters kind of thing. Okay. I know exactly what you mean, 
please never call it a soundless movie again. <laughs> because silent, you silent. confuse silent films. They're silent called silent. Film. You confuse silent me so film. much. Mm-hmm. Not not in a horrible way, but you said soundless films. You said soundless movies, and I was like, is this some anime or movie that you've seen that I haven't? They're called silent films, like specifically. <laughs> I was so confused. <laughs> I was genuinely thinking, like, is there some sort of film that's like, called called? I think I think so. Films so movie? my per yeah. I mean, but anyways, I think my my personal favorite like just kind of depiction like of this like whole thing like at least while watching it was the one scene in one of the monkey episodes um, where. Uh, her and the main character were fighting and you could just see the string as she's fucking <laughs> that was we'll get more into that later I yeah think, but that was yeah. definitely my one of my favorite fight scenes i yeah. think honestly the one of the scenes that the, and this is gonna be real fucking weird but there is one one screen that that's stuck in my head and it's a particular it's just one of the still screens they used of like a train station like just the, the name of the train station and like the stop, and I genuinely could not tell if it was animated or or photographed. I still don't know about that one particular scene, but it, it was it was so photorealistic. But it had like certain elements that made me think that maybe it wasn't quite a photo, but it genuinely could have been either or. Yeah. And I appreciate photorealism. You know I do. One last thing I wanted to cover before we... Because I feel like... I, I can feel the tides moving us to our next section. You mean you can feel the realms shifting? Yes. <laughs> uh, the ED. I didn't care for the ED at first, but... Like, at the end of the series, I was like, wait a minute. This ED has meaning. So I disliked the ED upon listening to it. And I, and I don't like the song in particular, like the, the beat of it or anything. What I did like are the end cards. They do end cards like Magical Girl Ore did. Like the, the beautifully drawn, animated end card that looks like, like Ascendance of a Bookworm does the same thing. These like stunning end cards that look like actual pieces of art. The song to me didn't stand out. And I'll say a little bit more on this in the story section. But then I realized the lyrics... And I caught this in the middle of where I heard them. The lyrics actually held importance to the main uh, uh, female. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did. It like, was, it was ba- treasures. Yeah, and I was like, oh my god. Yeah, but Jeez. like these end cards, the, just at the very end, different. Almost, it's pretty much a different artist, like every single time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they are all stunning. Yeah, I'll put I'll put a couple on screen. Um, I really loved those. I liked them in Ore too, and I love them in Ascendance of a Bookworm, even though we haven't reviewed that yet. But I really like this kind of, like, extra kind of piece of art at the end. I was a big fan of that. Unfortunately, this is not something I, I, I stayed for, because I just skipped past the ending. Yeah, they're, they're always at, like, the very end. And it's usually just, like, a piece of art about, like, wh- whoever the main character is. Or a couple of them are, are the, the, the uh, ad- adversaries. Mm-hmm. Um, but and Because they're all, <laughs> uh, unlike Ore and Ascendants of a Bookworm, which are all the same um, artist... These ones are all um, different artists. Mm -hmm. So there's no real continuity in art style. Like, they don't all have to look similar. Like, this one was my favorite. Yeah. This one is the episode 9 end card. I will specifically put it on screen. But I really liked this one. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot. Like, this feels like someone who read the original was at a light novel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it feels like they got a bunch of authors that read and were inspired by the original light novels. Yeah. And um, just... Ha- like yeah. told, told them to draw the draw a scene like that. Yeah, like, like draw your ca- draw yeah. the specific character or draw yeah. a character you enjoy or something like that. And I really enjoyed that. I think it adds something to to the end product personally. I don't personally care for this series, but I do feel the love that went into it. Yeah. That's I think where my thought is here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so fun. so this is the final end card, by the way. Um, <laughs> and I think it's very yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. That's just yeah. a straight up ass comic. Yeah, it's yeah. just just a comic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but like I said, they're they're pretty much. I think there's only um, uh, Hiro Mashima actually does one of them. Hmm. Um, he does the 
episode five end card in fairy tale style. Oh, that is definitely fairy tale style. Oh, yeah. yeah, but but so if if you actually look through the artist, you can actually recognize some of the names from other series. Um, but yeah, you can recognize some of the names from from other series uh, and and other art they've done, and some of them just look like a particular style. And even if you don't recognize the the artist's name, you're just like that's that's that anime or that's that manga. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it. I will say I appreciate that this really felt like a passion project, because it's it's often that people do passion projects, but it's rare that it genuinely feels like a passion project. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As I have dragged this fucking intro bit for twenty minutes. Yes. This might be. Look, let's be honest here. This series does deserve a lot of discussion on its production value. I think its production value is the heart and soul of this series. Yeah. And considering the fact that this was, like, around the same time that, like, shows the, like, Full Metal Alchemist, like, Brotherhood and stuff were, like, like were airing. Oh, yeah, around the, so 2009, around the same time as the ending of it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, yeah. So, the, so this definitely, like, stands out in its own kind of way, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's definitely <laughs> And true. I can at least see, it, like, even though, like, I personally didn't, like, fully enjoy everything about this show, like, I can absolutely appreciate what it did, and I can understand, like, why a lot of the anime community uh, really appreciates this show. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I think it's it's interesting. I, so I didn't know that the, the Monogatari series was so connected. Like, I, I knew that there was, like, a Monogatari continuity and, like, connection, but I didn't realize that it was quite so many uh, shows and, and movies and and and, uh, and OVAs all connected to one another. Because, um, like, looking at the list, I was like, I thought it was just Bakke Monogatari and Nisei Monogatari. Those were the only two I'd really heard of. But there's eight others. And they're not all full seasons. Some of them are just three or six OVA episodes. Yeah. But, or movies. Yeah, but there's still, this is still like 12 seasons of anime in a connected universe. You know? Like, I, I'm not surprised people are into it. Like, if a series gets fans and then just consistently produces more content, a lot of the fans are going to stick with it. <laughs> One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't necessarily have the strongest feelings towards the, the story itself. Um, or the characters, but I really feel the passion coming through in the animation and the music. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just personally, I think this was a little bit easier to deal with mentally than Bunny for me, Mm -hmm. even though they feel like kind of the same show, to be honest. Yeah. I, I, if I if we had watched this one like beforehand, or if I had watched this on my own time, I definitely would have put this in my recommendations after Bunny, because this definitely has a lot of similar elements, and it I can maybe a... and I can see maybe yeah. that this is part like part of this inspiration came for Bunny. It hits a lot of the same emotional. Yes, mm-hmm. I'm sure we can get into a discussion yes. on this in the free thoughts, but I do. There is definitely a lineage here of a uh, harem, the harem genre, similar to how there is a lineage between like you can look at uh the, like how naruto influenced demon slayer that kind of thing yeah but i i wouldn't I, w- I i will say i could see where you're going with that but i wouldn't necessarily say that you know harem harem is a much much older it is but thing. this is definitely a major note in it and shonen is real old seki Look, you you can draw a link between uh, old shonen and Naruto. It's just not something. Yeah, but this is a different in. type of harem than than regular harem because we talked about it in Bunny Girl Senpai, and I, uh, we can get into this later. But we talked about it in Bunny Girl Senpai. In Bunny Girl Senpai, you know who you know who the character is going to end up with in, in the first set. Like something similar happens here. Like it doesn't feel like we're constantly bouncing between pleasing all the girls at once. So it doesn't. It feels like a a, a harem of friends more than it feels like an actual harem show where all the girls throughout the whole series are competing for the love of the main character constantly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, there's something about a show where where your love intrigue, where your kind of, like, love intrigue is settled relatively early as opposed to dragging it out. Oh my god, if I had had, if this had been a true harem, dragging it out through 15 episodes, I would not... Then again, I would have felt the same way about Bunny Girl Senpai, to be honest. I've seen too many harems to 
to deal with that shit ever again. But with that being said, um, I have pushed us out of the realm of just normal stuff, and we need to move on yes. into story and characters. This is almost, there we go. This is almost, so, a, 30, uh, this is almost a 30 minute segment on its own. Yeah, so uh, try harder, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, engage with us if you like our content, and engage with us if you don't. I will fight you in the comments. Thank you.